You're listening to the Paranormal Peeps on the Dark Cast Network. Come to the dark side of indie podcasts with the Dark Cast Network. We have cookies. Between the realm of the dead and the journeys of the living, join Josh, Jamie, and Elisa as they delve into the vast world of the paranormal and breathe life back into the history of the departed. I'm Dawn. And I'm Cole. And Scottish Murders is a true crime podcast dedicated to people from or living in Scotland. Just like anywhere else in the world, these murders can be truly horrific and shocking. And we want to shine more light upon them. Join us every two weeks on Scottish Murders, where we'll bring you cases both solved and unsolved, giving you an insight into the other side of Bonnie Scotland. Find us wherever you stream your podcasts, as well as on social media. Join us there. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Paranormal Peeps podcast. I'm Elisa. I'm Jamie. And I'm Josh. And today we are going to talk about a ghost who solved her own murder. What? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's like murder she wrote, but for ghosts. <laughs> Do you know how many people don't know what who murder she wrote that is? That was like one of my favorite shows. I love that show. I watched it with my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it with my mom, so not as bad. Well, that's like my grandma. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeez. I'm just kidding. Uh, Wait, how old was your grandma? <laughs> no, she's like over 100 right now. Well, I mean, but back then when you watched it with her. Oh, she was probably in her, what? 40s? 60s. <laughs> yep. Old as his mom. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's funny. This podcast is about a woman named Teresita Besa. She was an immigrant from the Philippines who moved to the United States to pursue music. She was born in 1929 to a prominent business couple, Pedro and Socorro Besa. She left her home country after graduating from the University of of Assumption. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I know. I was like. Is, is that real? real? <laughs> I almost thought you said consumption. I'm like, that's I know. something different. I actually looked it up and it, it is real. Oh, my. It's okay. A, it's a place in Manila. So, and she graduated in 1960. However, this passion for music was soon overshadowed by her desire to help people. She eventually ended up working at a res- as a respiratory therapist at Edgewater Hospital in Chicago. Teresita went to work as usual and left the hospital around 5.30 p.m. and spoke to her friend Ruth for about 30 minutes before ending the conversation to receive a male guest, but she didn't say who he was. She never mentioned him to Ruth. And then later that night, on February 21st in 1977, neighbors alerted the maintenance worker who called 911 after smelling smoke. Around 8.40 p.m., firefighters responded to a call of a fire on the 15th floor of Teresita's apartment at 2740 North Pine Grove Avenue in Lincoln Park. They would find Teresita's nude body underneath a burning mattress with a butcher knife buried into the middle of her chest, and the home appeared to have been ransacked. Investigators believed that Teresita was the victim of a sexually motivated crime because she was found nude, and the arson destroyed any evidence that backed their beliefs. But Teresita's autopsy didn't show evidence of rape. The fire had destroyed a considerable amount of physical evidence. The biggest lead left behind in the remains of Teresita's belongings was inside her diary, one memo that nobody in her life would be able to decipher was get theater tickets for A.S. Police believed that somebody involved in the murder had those had those initials. They didn't allow this to tunnel their view, though, of the case and from the people that they interviewed. Teresita's boyfriend had become one of those few suspected after it was found that the couple had argued shortly before the murder. Everyone they spoke to was cleared from involvement, and within five months, the case hadn't gotten any further. During the investigations, it was also concluded that the victim had no known enemies. The colleagues described her as intelligent and unassuming, and lived a quiet life. And since most of her belongings were destroyed by the fire, the case quickly reached a dead end, 
or so they thought. That was until a married couple, Remy Chua and her husband, Jose Chua, contacted the detectives claiming that they had information. Jose was a doctor that worked with Teresita, claimed his wife had been possessed on three different occasions by Teresita's ghost. He described these possessions as Remy going through like a trance-like state and her voice completely changing while she spoke to Golag. It wasn't a, li- a language that was unfamiliar to Remy, but she rarely spoke it. It was Teresita's native language. Jose said he wasn't aware of her murder until his wife's possessions. So that makes me wonder, were they quickly after her murder? Because if he had worked with her, wouldn't he find out that she had been murdered like within days? Well, you would think, yeah. You would think. But unfortunately, we're not given the information on when these possessions happened. Right. Just that they did. Right. Well, and it sounds like it was after the five months. It's like, not. You'll find out that it's not. But okay. but it's within these five months. Okay. Gotcha. That's all we know. The very first time that Teresita spoke through Remy, Jose claimed she said, quote, Doctor, I would like to ask for your help. The man who murdered me is still at large. I am Teresita Besa. And he refused and didn't tell anyone what had happened. And shortly after, Remy revealed that she had been having visions and dreams about Teresita begging for help, begging her to go to the police and telling them what had happened. And it makes you wonder, like, how many times did she do this? Right. Right. So on another occasion of these possessions, Remy was taking a nap. And while she slept... The voice came back telling Jose her killer was an orderly at the hospital all three worked at, and his name was Alan Showery. Just before waking up, she urged Jose to go to the police, and Remy has no memory of this ever happening, and Jose decided against going to the police again. Dude, I don't know if I could mistake it, like, or if I could say no when one, this is the second time this is happening, and two, she's just said that she's already had visions and dreams, yeah, of her doing this, yeah. Well, and she was asleep and then started talking like outright, yeah, and, and she has no no recoll- memory, yeah, no recollection of it, yeah. So the third and final time it happened, Teresita questioned him why he hadn't gone to the police, and he told her it was because the lack of evidence against Alan Chowry. So she then continued to tell him that Alan had come to fix her TV, but had ended up stabbing her and setting her on fire, has stolen pieces of her jewelry after killing her. So she goes on and tells him all of this. All the details. Mm -hmm. Jeez. So detectives Joseph Statula and Lee Eplin surprisingly took the tip seriously and began looking into Alan Showery. It seemed unlikely that they... Would have if it weren't for the matching initials to this, the singular solid evidence that they had and the status of the Chua's. So Statula later said in an interview about what they about why they took that tip, because, you know, I think you get like lots of tips that come in and you really have to cipher through which ones that you're going to actually follow up, follow up on. Mm -hmm. But so he was asked, like, why would you take a tip like that? You know, and he said, quote, I talk to pimps, prostitutes, drug addicts in the Belmont area. Dr. And Mrs. Chua are educated, intelligent people who live in a $90,000 house. A distinct change for me. I wanted information on this murder and I listened and acted on what they told me. Can we just talk about this $90,000 house? Okay, cause I mean, I wish. I... <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna get you a shed okay but <laughs> this is not this even is, this is also the 70s i know i know but still uh, oh, who would have thunk that it would go this bad okay so they ran a back check a background check on alan and he worked as an orderly at the same hospital on the same wing as Teresita. He also lived by her. So they spoke to coworkers who told them that Alan was in a rough spot financially and Teresita was being nice and trying to help him out by giving him odd jobs and paying him generously. And then on the 21st, he had went to her house to go fix her TV. So far, this is like the same thing as what she's telling in her possessions. Yep. They went to Alan's apartment and he immediately denied 
killing Teresita. But what they do notice on Alan's girlfriend is a pearl ring and a jade pendant. The girlfriend said that they were a late Christmas present. The detectives brought Alan in for questioning and they showed him the evidence and he confessed. According to his confession, Alan went to to repair Teresita's TV, but when he left, he decided that he would return with the intention of just robbing her. When he arrived, Teresita let Alan back inside, and when she turned to relock the door, he attacked her from behind. He disrobed her to make it appear that it was a sexual crime, and he covered her body with the mattress and set it on fire and took the jewelry before leaving. He recanted his story, but a month later, he changed his plea to guilty. And the jewelry that was on his girlfriend was confirmed by her family members that, that they were hers. Oh, wow. That they were Teresita's. What did she think? Could you imagine, like, look at look at this beautiful stuff that he got me. And then it's like, you know, that's off a dead girl, woman that he murdered. Well, and to think, like, I, I can't. In my mind, that would be super suspicious to have known that you're having money troubles. Yep. And then all of a sudden you come up with this pearl ring and this beautiful pendant. Yeah. Yeah. Out of nowhere. And it's a quote late Christmas gift. Uh, that's a little suspicious to me. So it makes me wonder why. Because he, okay, because he recants. Yep. And then he comes back randomly a month later and pleads guilty for no rhyme or reason from the, from the people that he's working with. Maybe, he, maybe she started haunting him. That's, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's my thought. I was wondering if Teresita was going in spirit to him. Or maybe in his dreams. Yes. Nightmares and haunting him there. Mm-hmm. So he was sentenced. That, now this is what gets me. Okay. He was sentenced to 14 years for murder, robbery, and arson. 14 years. But he was released within six. No, geez. What kind of plea deal did he get? Holy cow. No kidding. 14 years. That's it. He killed somebody, stabbed her in the chest, set her on fire, and, stole her. Her, and stole her jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. And he only gets 14 years. Well, the kind of line we were watching, I can't remember what we were watching, but we were watching one of those true crime series. And this person confessed to murder, but they did they couldn't get him on first degree murder, even though it was, it would have been premeditated. They got him on, they pled to manslaughter and cut like 14 months. That was it. Whoa. Yeah. That's awful. Like, I would be so mad if I was a relative of Teresita. Yeah. For like, six years? That's it? Yeah. You can get that just for robbing somebody, keeping them alive, let alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's insane how, at times, it seems like people get sentenced... <laughs> longer than they should for something small mm -hmm. and then something major they they nearly walk yep yeah it's backwards it is it, it definitely can be for sure but this um case was only solved because of her haunting that was the only way that they could solve this and it was after something. her going to this person over and over and over and over again she was determined. Yeah. And for that, she only got six years. <laughs> yeah. All of the work that she had to put into haunting somebody. And mind you, in the 10 years that I've been doing ghost hunting, I have never heard of s such a persistent spirit. Of it actually happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you generally don't hear of you, those things like that. No, it'll, it'll be... One random thing happening here. One random thing happening here. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing that the part that is really interesting to me is the possession part of it. And she's never had it before and she's never had it after. Yeah. 
this was the only time that this has ever happened. Well, what's interesting, though, is normally my understanding of possession is it's a willing thing. The host who is possessed has to be willing. Oh, yeah. And does it intentionally. Yeah. So or unintentionally through consequences of their actions. But right, right. But this isn't this seems to be a more of a forced possession. Where she wasn't asking to be possessed that we let me we know of. Right. right. But she was. And very like randomly in that avenue. It's also one of the few documented cases of a, what I consider like a type one mm-hmm. possession. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I wonder if because she was such a good person in life, mm-hmm. like people talked about her as a very sweet person. Yeah. And I and she was trying to do a good deed and helping him because he was in such bad ways financially. She's having him come over helping him with things around the house, doing odd, these odd projects and paying him and very paying well. paying him well. Yeah. to do that. And she's doing these good deeds. I wonder if because she was such a good a good spirit if it was something like okay, I'm going to allow this to happen and she's able to do that to solve this murder. But it really makes me wonder has this happened before? You know? Like, yeah. like what exactly? Like, um, because we always, there's always so many scenarios and so many um, times where there's these unsolved murders. Right. And how many times have, have their spirits been trying so hard to solve their murder? Because I hear like, Like if you ever watch like Teresa Caputo, where she's she helps people who have um, family members who have passed on and a lot of them tragically. Yeah. And many of them murders. And so you wonder and a lot of the time they're they're like, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. I'm happy. I'm, you know, don't focus on how I died and you need to move on all this other stuff. But I wonder how many of them are like, "Uh, no. Like this person needs to be caught for what he's done to me. He's not getting away. And I actually like care way more than most do about this. And so they try to make people know who it is that that killed them. I only know of one other incident, and that's actually in Utah, that a ghost has appeared after a murder. And that was with Salt Air Sally. Like her body was dumped out by Salt Air. Mm -hmm. And she haunted the great Salt Air up until the point in time that they identified her body. Once they were able to identify who she was, and my understanding was that was done through paranormal, like through investigations. Mm -hmm. Once they actually identified who she was and got a positive identification, she stopped haunting the building. They didn't solve her crime. I don't, I don't know if they ever solved her murder. But once she was notified, once they identified her, You're right. gone. Because that's what mattered to her. Yeah. yeah. Not to be anonymous body dumped. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. But I don't, I mean, I personally don't know of any. I've heard of one other story and it was a long time ago. That was very similar where. Like what's a long time ago? Hmm. I, I want to say 1800s, early 1900s, something like that. Okay, that's a fair amount of time ago. Yeah, <laughs> where it's a very similar story, um, but it's not something that you hear about. But it's something that I would feel like I would want to do. I yeah. would want my my case figured out. Well, I mean, police police departments and stuff do hire psychics. Mm-hmm. From time to time. So, I mean, isn't that kind of the same thing, though? I mean, it's not as forward, though. No, right. it's it's to give uh, give them like a lead. Right. Instead of, you know, when they're at a dead end, it's like, give us something that we can work with. Work with. Yeah. Right. But if, if, but if you have a psychic or a medium or 
or psychic medium, depending on how you phrase it, right? They're they're talking to somebody, right? So they're talking more than likely to the deceased, to the victim. So, I mean, isn't it? I mean, it's similar, right? Well, I think sometimes they get images. I would say it's similar, but it's not like the spirit is doing the initiative. They're not. Um, it's. I wouldn't say that they're forced to talk, right? But right. it's like somebody has come to them and say, hey, now tell me what's going on versus the spirits coming to the person and making mm-hmm. the initiative. Yeah. That's where I'm like, okay. How many of them have tried to do this? Right. Yeah. Well, you also got to wonder, too, how many have tried and been unsuccessful? Well, that's what it makes me wonder is if uh, Remy, if she is sensitive. Remy is the lady that. Right. I'm, yeah. I wonder if she's sensitive and is able to be more open to something like that. I mean, it's possible. I don't know if Remy's still alive. It was only in 77. I mean, that, well, I guess that was like 50 years ago. <laughs> Try 47 years ago. Hey. <laughs> what are you saying, Josh? How do you know that date? Because <laughs> I was born in 78. That's how I know. <laughs> but she would be 70, 80. Yeah. More than likely somewhere in that in that ballpark. Depending on how old they were. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, interesting story. Yeah, that's great. That's unfortunately it just raises more questions. <laughs> I, I apparently, I, I, well, because it's like, because then there's like, you you like you get the nice happy ending like he's convicted, and then you're like, well, that sucks. He served six years, six years, and got out. Here's the thing, though. I really hope she's at peace. I do too. Yeah, I think for her it was like it was more important for her to be. Uh, or for him to be caught and to know who he was. Right. But him getting off so easily. So while on one hand, I hope he's at peace. On the other hand, I hope she's still haunting his dreams. <laughs> 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 so that he never can escape it. He I may mean, not be behind bars, but I hope he's always living the nightmare. The thing is, is I'm sure he knows. I mean, one, if you've taken someone's life, you're never going to forget it. it oh. It's always going to live with you. Now, how much that affects you. I was going to say the that's empathy, different. That, the that's empathy different, behind it. Yeah. That's a different story, right? Yeah. But you got to figure, I mean, it seemed like the motivation behind the murder is such a. It's pennies. I That didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. It's like, I'm just going to rob her. Of two things. Well, I, I'm sure he was planning on robbing her of more things, but I mean, you get in there and you're like, well, there's not a whole lot to rob. And then. You, for whatever reason, you just decide to murder the individual. It seems so random. Oh, yeah. And the way she was found, I mean, random. That, well, that's, yeah, she was found randomly, but the, the rest of it was definitely an intent. Like, I'm going to cover up what I did so I don't get caught. Yeah. Right. Which obviously didn't work. But, but the thing but is, he, he did a dang good job with setting everything on fire. And yeah. Like, yeah. But you, you got to figure, though, 70s forensics is not, oh, uh, it's the not same what as it forensics is. today. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. He would have been caught. Yeah. Way earlier. Yeah. I mean, but how long was it that he got caught? Like from from murder to. Con- it says five months. That's still really short. It is. But that's only because of of her spirit. That's it. Otherwise, he would have gotten off scot-free. Yeah. They had no idea. They had no clue. The only clue that they had was, I need to get tickets for AS. That's it. That's all they had. And even that isn't even a great clue. No. Because that could be anything. Yep. It could be... I was even shocked that that was even a clue. I'm trying to think of bands or something that would start with AS, but I'm I think only thing was Alan Parsons project, but that wouldn't be AS. <laughs> no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for listening. 
Absolutely. And as always, stay ghosty, my peeps. Are you looking for your next true crime podcast? Do you crave stories that have mystery and suspense? Well, look no further. Introducing Love and Murder, the podcast that dives deep into the world of relationships gone horribly wrong. Every week, I take you on a journey through the dark side of love, where passion turns into obsession, family becomes enemies, and romance turns to murder. So why should you listen to Love and Murder? Because this is not just another true crime podcast. We're your partners in crime, your storytellers, and your weekly dose of suspenseful entertainment. So what are you waiting for? Join the Lamb community, www.murderandlove.com. That's Love and Murder backwards, murderandlove.com. See you soon. It's gray. No, it's beige. Oh, sh- no, it's gray. It's <laughs> beige. It's actually mauve. It's really what you guys are looking at. <laughs> it's big, but it's it's little big, not real big, but it's just kind of little. <laughs> I am your entertainment for the day. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're like, what well, can we show Elisa to see how it, she can get wrong at it again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's make her feel like crap. Just <laughs> I hope it doesn't make you no, feel like crap. <laughs> uh. Hi, kitties. Okay. You ready? Let's do it. Thank you for listening to the Paranormal Peeps podcast. You can find us on social media at Twitter at CPR Paranormal, on Facebook at Paranormal Peeps Podcast, and Cold Spot Paranormal Research. And you can find us on Instagram at coldspot underscore paranormal underscore research.